this one historical signal, which has never lied in Bitcoin's history, is, is once again showing its face. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. And is it working? Is OBS working? Oh my God, it's a miracle. Praise the fucking Lord. It's a miracle. OBS is working right now. Hey, welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Happy Friday. Happy uh, end of the week to people who are actually working out there. And and more importantly, I do have a few announcements to make um, that I want to follow up from the earlier this week. So if you've noticed, if you try to, and you've, and you've missed the videos from like the last three or four days, if you try to get onto the Discord community and you've noticed that something's different, uh, you're exactly right. It is very different as uh, what we've had to do is we've had to implement a bot sentinel that essentially verifies people to make sure that they're not bots because uh, that's been like a massive pain point for the community over the last year or so a lot of complaints about it and i totally understand this has been the best solution until discord offers up something more streamlined <laughs> but for right now uh if you want to retain if you if you haven't already and you want to retain your access to the general community in the discord what you'll have to do is you have to leave the server completely rejoin the server using the link below in the description or if you don't want to use it there for whatever reason you just don't like the way that that one looks go on crowntrader.net it'll have it there rejoin the server and you'll be prompted with a private message by our bot sentinel uh alt identifier a l t d e n t i f i e r it'll it'll prompt you with um some sort of like verification process like a capture or something like that and uh to, to essentially verify that you're a human being or whatever gender that you identify with except for another bot because we are racist as fuck and uh and you know what i'm done with these goddamn bots anyways uh with that said you'll run that through and uh and then you'll and then you'll receive your access and all good I, again i do apologize about it I, I you know i know that it's a little bit inconvenient it's a little bit annoying but um it's the best it's the best way that we have to do this right now more importantly if you're in the programs the ta program options program jewel whatever the fuck nothing's changed for you you don't need to do anything please do not leave the server unless you like actually want to leave the server because yeah, i'm not here to handcuff you or anything like that but but you don't need to do anything Anything to get your access if that's what you are, are are listening to right now so uh so please don't do that it's just gonna create more work for yourself and myself and uh and neither of us want that anyways um looking at uh looking at the crown chain application right here which i should also update you on the health of our developer he is uh he's he's doing well he says not to worry about him he does indeed have the coronavirus his wife seems to have recovered and she's out of quarantine he's still in quarantine for a little bit of time um and uh and, and he's in good spirits uh, more importantly and he says he said he's he's he says he actually says it's not all that bad which is kind of kind of comforting um but uh but more importantly with him and what you might be more interested in is the updates with regards to the open interest chart that'll be pushed once he's out of quarantine in the next update it should be relatively fast once he leaves there um but right now you know it's more of a i guess political thing because that's what he's forced to do um anyways uh looking at the crown chain application which can be found at app.crownchain.net it's free go take advantage of it i should probably put a link in the description below as well which i have still failed to do um, um, but more importantly, we do see something very, very interesting here. Bitcoin did have a nice move up yesterday, and, and it was completely against my bias bone. And I want to say straight up, before we get into the actual price action analysis, I was fucking wrong yesterday with having a bias to the downside. Straight up wrong, as well as price action let me know. But that does offer up a nice new set of probabilities, statistical edges that we can look into today, of course. And so going in with an open mind and open heart and open, I don't know, what else do you want to open? Well, I got my back hole open still which is quite annoying um i do want to put interest on the open interest once again this open interest chart could not come sooner but more importantly we saw it go from above 700 million that we saw yesterday down below 650 million that we see right now as bitcoin approaches our next sort of or sorry our next set of medium term resistance so we'll get into that in just a second but keep that in the back of your mind's eye because it still does not really give me a clear way forwards for having another bias boner for the uh short and medium term time frames for the higher term time still very much set still still very much um in place and we can talk about that a little bit although i want to save a lot of that for uh sunday uh long-term analysis but for right now um all other uh underlying market dynamics are more or less steady here it looks i mean these have been more or less steady for like the last two weeks i feel like i always say that bitcoin dominance still hovering around 64 64 global market cap still around 200 billion 
uh, with a B, and uh, the Crypto Fear and Greed Index uh, hovering between about a 10 read and a 20 read. Uh, that still is the one thing that really does make me think that um, that Bitcoin could be in the process of climbing the wall of worry. That is actually a hallmark signature of that, which would obviously be more on the bullish side. But I, I, I you know, I've, 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 I've a lot of, I've a lot of cause for concern for that. And when it comes to price action, I don't really necessarily see that just yet. Anyway, speaking of price action, let's go jump into it right now. Oh, I should also say that I will be on Twitch later today. It's going to be another long stream, assuming that nothing catastrophic goes on. We might even have dogs visiting us too. So if you uh, want to see some, uh, some cute little Pomeranians, well, well, hang out, hang out over there. I should also say with the Twitch streams, uh, you know, uh, you know, I understand that a lot of people coming through the contents of this channel want to look directly at like price action and say, hey, man, can you look at XYZ shitcoin over here and, and XYZ altcoin over there and, and this fucking penny stock over here? I, that's not the purpose of it. Uh, we want to be looking at immediate price action for, for regular markets, Forex, you know, uh, traditional markets, and then obviously Bitcoin as well. And, uh, and the focus a little bit more, a little bit more spread out around gaming and then also, uh, and then also price action you know when the time arises anyways uh looking at price action right here let me just make sure that i'm recording i am recording the microphone's working as well this is really really good because i've literally had about five failed botched recordings before this one as it's, it's always something man anyways uh looking at this right here you know what was i wrong about yesterday so i was wrong about my bias on those short-term time frames remember this blue box right here we closed right above it pretty much right after um right after the uh, right, uh, right after the end of the stream i believe the two hour closed above the blue box yeah on the next tick and so uh and so that was my clear signal to get the fuck out of my short now i didn't necessarily leave it fully but i did cover it so i am you know i don't i don't have any real uh del open deltas right now i'm just kind of watching and waiting but once we broke above this blue box right here that's what initiated the next move all the way up to the next short-term region right above 7,000 ish region and then we cleared that one again and then another $200 uh, uh, extension all the way up to the 7,200 region right here so all of that was short-term and that actually did play out and this is why I do like to cover all the different scenarios because it is a game of probabilities and if you play the game long enough you you already know that to be true you already know that this is just a game of statistics anything can happen you know at the end of the day I do hope that uh, your you know longer term I would hope that uh, that that's going to work out more in my favor than not that's trusting in the statistics of this market um but in that scenario i was certainly wrong with having my bias bonus to the downside but that is why i have invalidation points and i'm sure that there's going to be people out there saying you're fucking wrong fuck you fuck you crown it's like all right well fair enough i mean that's trading man i'm going to be wrong and i'm going to be wrong again for sure um uh, so yeah, fair enough. Anyways, um, as far as this goes, uh, still the short-term timeframes are actually more or less the same here, and it does happen to line up with some pretty damn important areas. Now, if you are looking at this as a rising channel, however, I would say that the rising channel narrative now does get kind of destroyed here now, doesn't it? Because no longer are we kind of operating within the bounds of this, you know, so, you know, some like this right here, or I suppose, well, actually. It, it depends how you look at it. If, are you looking at it as a rising channel or a rising wedge? In this case, actually, a rising wedge still does work. I don't think it's going to work out like that. Um, anyway, anyways, doesn't matter what I think. You already know that. You already know that. Anyways, um, let me go back down to lower term timeframes because actually this is one of the few times where I think that it's just better to be deductive with price action and focus on these very short term timeframes. And you know what? I'm actually going to get, well, I, I do want to keep this one in there for right now, but just pretend that it's not there anyways going from blue box to blue box still more or less the same thing on that we do see that this blue box right around 7200 on the top side and 7150 on the uh, on the bottom side 50 dollar range uh still still giving a resistance to price action as long as we're living below there there is something to be said about price action or sorry there uh, there is something to be said about a legitimate possibility of downside from this region the, the reason why i say that is because you could look at this or what bears are likely looking at this as is as a retest of the rising wedge i usually don't see rising wedges play out all that often in Bitcoin land and in fact we do see that as of right now it's still respecting it's still respecting the broken uh, support now as resistance but that might just be more of a technicality and I want to get into what I actually spoke about at the beginning of this video in a uh, in a little bit here because it is gonna it is gonna offer up a more bullish uh, bullishly um, perceived view on this 
Um, anyways, uh, as it stands right now, you know, could you still make the case for that? Yes, absolutely. The volume signature is still very much in play there. We do see a nice tailing off going from left to right. We did get a nice spike up yesterday, but it's still within the context of this whole thing. And with open interest coming down at the same time, that does let me know that we haven't really seen a change of behavior. Like if we were going to pop back up and have continuation on top of it, I would have expected to see open interest move up from 700 million yesterday uh, into like the 750 to 800 million mark and, and have price action fall through to the upside while breaking back into that channel that we broke to the downside yesterday. It Because that did not happen, I do still think that bears have a legitimate case here. It's not all said and done as far as I'm concerned. Um, and uh, and I do think, you know, and I do have cause to be uh, for myself more conservative in this region. Um, I, I don't necessarily have like a strong bias of bullish or bearish, but I can make a good case for both sides right now. That would be the best thing for the bears that they have going on. We do see also, um, or sorry, what else do we see? I mean, we're, we're just kind of grinding out the 55 exponential mean average right here. That's not really of too much interest on spot price action, but it's more of an interest on CMEs. You could definitely say that the gap is filled now from uh, from uh, from that spike up last night. The real question is, do we get continuation on top of that? If we reapproach this area, 7,300 on CMEs or 7,250, just basically taking out this, uh, this, uh, this last prior high that we spiked up to last night, um, I would look for extension all the way up to at the very least 7,500, the top side of this region, which remember that CMEs do have about a, you know, $50 to $100 price premium on spot price action. So that'd be, that'd be spot somewhere around like 7350 to 7400 ish region, which is still that, that, you know, that critical area for the upside. And of course, I still do hold on to that, that, that I do feel very strongly about this area right here, 70, 7350 to 7400 ish region. If Bitcoin can, can even close a four hour delta back above that region, I do believe we will see extension all the way up towards this target, somewhere right around 7800 to, 7, uh, to 7900 ish region, um, give or take a few bucks, somewhere in this blue box right here which is going to correlate with our long-term downtrend resistance coming in from our last high at about 10,000 in, uh, in in early February, getting the last few highs as well along the way. So I do like that. Also aligned with an order block from it coming from the prior breakdown in early March and also the prior accumulation zone that we saw in late 2019. So I really like that area overall. Bitcoin did approach it for a little bit of a uh, little bit of distribution activities in there in that region. Doesn't mean it can't reaccumulate after that and pop up for, you know, for another run into the deeper 9,000s, 10,000s, whatever it could be. Be. Um, but, you know, still level by level at this point, um, at least for myself, you know, more Cavalier traders out there are going to be making decisions uh, earlier based upon that. However, also on the bear's case for the more immediate picture is the fact that we still do technically have a downtrend here as it stands. If you're looking at this, this is your high, this is your low, this is your lower high, this is your lower low, this is your next lower high just by a few bucks here. But we did close on a closing basis, 71.12 and a half. This one on a closing basis, 71.32 and a half it looks like so technically speaking there is a lower high in there as it stands has this been confirmed as lower high it's certainly looking like it wants to shape up to be one um, but looking at momentum oscillators, what's interesting to me here is that we actually do have potential hidden bearish divergence in play. And I do think that this will play out. So regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish, I do think Bitcoin will pop back down and test around the 200 x benchmark average. That's going to be the key critical ingredient, though, for myself in my next trading activity. I would love, I, I will base, uh, uh, you know, I will certainly base my next trade probably off of that almost solely because the longer that Bitcoin remains above the 200 x benchmark average, naturally speaking, this, uh, this time frame will get a goal and cross once again and we've been following this quite a bit with a fake out not so long ago on spot price action not on cmes to be fair but uh but but the longer that we stay above the 200 exponential average it is inevitable that it will get the golden cross once again so i would expect that if bears are going to put in a little bit of a fake out right here play out this hidden bearish divergence and actually bring it back down to the low side of the range maybe back down 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 to 6700 i would look for the 200 exponential average to be the gatekeeper for that move can bitcoin break it on a four-hour closure 69.50 then yes i would target to move back down here wherever the, our next blue box is we could probably even tighten this one up somewhere right around uh 6750 to 6700 a nice 50 dollar range right here would actually would actually would, would, would be absolutely lovely and then it would really start to look like we're playing out just some sort of a short-term channel i don't really trust this all that much um but it is in play and technically speaking a falling channel like this would does does typically have statistically speaking a bullish uh resolution meaning that we're going to break out the top side of it but keep in mind 
mind because this level because this level right here this blue box correlating with this last sort of spike up uh naturally gets that that declining resistance i just trust these these horizontals more because they're they're naturally going to line up if it, if it is a real resistance and more importantly that's what can certainly drive that next bias but here's the thing here's where it gets a little bit more interesting because because it is a falling channel we actually can make a measure move on top of it and uh and if we did break above this blue box we could actually target a move all the way up here the measure move would actually be pointed all the way up towards beautifully spoken our 7800 level this blue box to the top side right here correlated with the with the historical area and all that good stuff so i do think that that's within the cards that's possible we do have a way forwards for that the competing narrative as we said though is the greater formation still does look like actually a redistribution formation right here and as it stands as long as we are below this trend line that's been holding up all of our last one two three and then you can make a fourth low right here before breaking it to the downside is rejecting that still is very much uh valid now i'm not certain how how valid this measure move is anymore in fact i don't think it's it's certainly not this anymore it's got to be a lot less so the measure move to the downside is not going to be anywhere near what i had before now it's actually going to be uh, about 58 to 5900 now is what it looks like it doesn't mean that I, it doesn't mean that I can't reformulate and then go lower after that. But as it stands right now, I would say that that is uh, that that you know that that has severely been um, dampened. And you know what? we could even move this down a little bit lower as that kind of further confirms this is the area to be looking at rather than um, rather than uh, rather than a little bit higher, which would put us somewhere around 50, 58, 50 to fifty nine hundred ish region. It looks like so plotting out both ways here and the gatekeepers for these moves i think are still more or less the same to the downside medium term bias boner turns back down as as soon as we break below so about 6700 on a four hour total closure and keep on playing out this downtrend to the upside a lot more interesting just because we could have major change of behaviors on the short term time frames but also the medium and higher term time frames if we do break back above uh, 7150 and close a four hour total above there just basically taking out this prior high right here i would look for another test up at the very least to about 73 to 7350-ish region. That's a $200 move at a $7,000 price point. You know, few few percent, very much tradable. Um, and that's where the higher term timeframes could change. Above 7350 to 7400, on even a four hour closure, I would look for extension all the way up here towards 70, basically 7,800 all the way up here in line with that measure move. So we do have multiple wave forwards here and I can make a good case for both. This is my time as a trader to just kind of sit back, wait a little bit. And, um, and, and I'd actually, and I'd actually, this is one of the few times where I'd actually like to play the breakout with, with buying premium and probably doing some spreads as I do kind of like what's going on here. Volatility is relatively low as far as the longer term goes, or sorry, vol volume and volatility relatively low as far as the longer term goes when we go over here to a daily we're still contracting as you can see on the greater formation and we do see that that is further verified by the open interest uh reading coming 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 off the high and the historical volatility percentile obviously contracting over the last you know over month now so i do still think that these underlying market dynamics do align more with the bearish look on this and if i did have to call it right now i would still align with that but as far as trading goes this is the time where options really come to shine because i do believe that uh with with volume still kind of contracting over here and perhaps even the 12 hours already like way down there yes indeed it is um we are not too far away from a break and i do believe that we will see a break probably within this next week uh before before may before may somewhere around we're on the 17th we start to get a very 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 very, very full somewhere right around here this is about the 24th so that's uh a little uh, around around a week from today i think that could happen any you know anywhere within this region right here so early next week i think is very very likely and so with an explosion of volatility i would actually like to buy some premium and if i am going to play this breakout uh you know put uh, puts uh, you know buying a put spread or, or buying a call spread is actually not the worst idea here in my opinion um, if you are in the options program, this would be the time to be looking at something like that as, uh, as volatility is kind of set to expand in the not so distant future. Now, on top of that, on the bullish side as well, and maybe this just supersedes all fucking, all fucking prior analysis that I've been looking at. We do see 12 hour stokes the upside and I can do all the fucking crazy analysis in the world. Blindly trading this has been phenomenally profitable for now two years and it's embarrassing to talk about. So just turn off the video now. 12 hour stokes are up. It's good. No, just kidding. Uh, you know, I do, I do actually still align with the bear side more here, but, um, but, uh, but again, my, you know, my bias, my bias changing areas are still very much, uh, very much set in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to get rid of, um, or may, maybe we could go to a fresher chart If we go to a fresher chart like this. 
and um, and uh, what do we want to, want to look at here? I want to look a little bit at the daily and two day time frames. So daily time frame still does have our momentum also it is technically to the downside and they will remain to the downside as long as we are closing daily totals below 7120 ish region. Uh, same thing for the RSI. It is technically to the upside right now, but in order to cross back down to the downside, we'd have to close the daily below 6950 ish region. So both those areas are of interest for the uh, you know for the daily trend here, especially with this potentially putting in a lower high as long as Bitcoin is living below, especially fit the 55 exponential moving average, which thus far it has been rejected from. I wouldn't necessarily call this a full on rejection just yet. It is way too early to, to really judge it. In my opinion, I need to see like at least another day or two before I really start to get uh, before I really start to air on that side of the uh, of the of you know the possibility table. But it is it is in play there, and especially as long as below the 55, it's um it's very much relevant. Uh, looking at 12 hour uh, momentum also, or sorry, we already looked at that. Um, what else do we want to look at? Uh, 12 hour jewel is going to be lining up a little bit for a continuation signal perhaps uh however that's still not that's still like days away so it's not it's not gonna be happening right now but it is a potential in the future again as long as this area rejects it you know it it, it, it will inevitably happen the problem is like a waiting game right now so the waiting game is essentially where the bulls now kind of have the ball in their court they can break to the upside here a lot more easy than the bears can uh, can break to the downside, obviously, because we're a lot closer to that region. You know, just just putting just putting a higher high above this region right here would be good, um, and would also undo this death cross back into a golden cross. And I'd look for you know I'd look for that to play out a little bit. Um, so this is a pretty critical next few days of price action because it it should have massive implications with the uh, with the medium and long term coming into you know the month of May and probably even June. Um, so I would keep a keen eye on this. Now, while we do see all of this, one of the, another one of the reasons why I do lean to the downside in the short term is because or, or even medium term and, and even long term here is well de, you know define long term because now i don't really have too many things pointed super far down below like four thousand or anything like that i do have i do have 5900 ish region on you know in the cards um but looking at this right here we do we not only see hidden bearish divergence in the making but we also see momentum oscillators getting relatively tired in, a, in an area that they typically like to turn down from this is your four hour stokes three hours probably gonna be already crossing there yes it is it's coming from the same area two hours the exact same area beautiful and hourly floundering around but technically down right now so that's usually when i do see the uh, the better trades um uh, come about so i do think that that is more or less on the side of um on the side of uh, what's it called on the downside and if we look at the verse the reverse uh uh stoke cross right here you know we do see that this will this will fall through on the four hours to the downside on any closure below 70 81 essentially on what is this uh, uh finex uh let's go back to uh, gdax here it's, it's the same thing on gdax to be fair um let me get rid of all these things as well i just want to be looking at this and that further confirms that essentially we are you know i'd at the very least look for a test down to 69.50 again i i i think that even if you're bullish even if you're bearish probably probably going to test down there first before anything else uh looking at the three hour um same area 70 70 as long as long as you're below there we will confirm a a cross to the downside on the next tick and this next tick is coming in about three hours um and two hours respectively uh for the two hour um uh that same area would be 7150 and it's sorry it's already confirmed down so it needs to get back above there in order to cross back up that would also print us a higher high as well and that even on like a buy hour and on the hourly as well we still do not do we do we close on a higher high we actually did close on a higher high on the hourly but uh don't really care about the hourly trend uh it does not supersede the two even the fucking two hourly but especially the four hour 12 hour daily weekly etc um and uh and what do we see here in order to cross back up to the upside have to have to get back above and close above 7120 um so yeah anyways um 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 let me get to the let uh, let me get to the discussion of the beginning of this video so what is the historical signal that's actually showing some that 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 certainly is more on the bullish side right now and for the macro has not been wrong um look at let's look at nasdaq futures and uh, in e-mini futures uh humongous move up here um now this is starting to look a little bit toppy to me we did hit our 28 or sorry our 8900 i think i think i think yesterday night on twitch i said 8900 would be my target and and that's where we are right now it does look to be putting in a little bit of a uh, little bit of a pushback as it is right now if we do close today's daily dodo anything anything where we are right now around 8900 this will look like an allen gap and i would look for at the very least a um a move back down into range somewhere back down around like the 85 to 8600 range down around here coming into next week now i that doesn't that doesn't necessarily make me bearish for the medium or long term i do think that it would make me short term uh, looking for downside but realistically it's a long day to long day to go so 
I would keep an I would keep an eye on this level as long as as long as it's closing here or lower by end of day in 14 hours and 44 minutes and 44 seconds. I would um, I would actually be looking for a pullback coming into next week. However, the weekly would be looking more or less very 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 girthy. I mean, this is erect as fuck, and I would think that we're going to get another try higher coming into the uh, coming coming into next week after a short term pullback or you know maybe the week after that whatever it ends up being. So this would be the more bullish thing because we do see a strong correlation between Bitcoin and traditional markets, and this is further enhanced by looking at e-mini futures. Not as strongly though, to be fair, not as strongly. So it's a really it's really the techs that are leading this rally to the upside as you would expect. You know. This whole coronavirus has really expedited a lot of, um, you know, technology change. I think that we're going to see it in the economy more importantly, uh, because, you know, people are going to be, you know, people who are who are out of work right now and looking to go back to work. If they if they have any sense of them, what they're probably thinking is and, and they probably do, because this is like a serious situation right now. What they're probably thinking is, you know what? I need to be thinking about how I can future proof myself against this sort of, you know, this sort of situation happening again in our life. This is not a political statement in any way shape or form but i do think it is important to say that uh you know where we're going as a society is basically just being catalyzed by this whole thing i uh, do you think i mean every, you know if you know if if you can work from home you probably would i mean there's really no reason why not to and and during this sort of thing you know psychologically speaking this is going to really condition people i think for a long period of time people are going to be one afraid to fucking go outside i mean they're already afraid to go outside because uh, like the because like the media is telling them about every you know war that's going on or, or killings going on over here or rapes going on over there you know shit like that just scaring the ever-loving crap out of people so they you you know, or keep on watching, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, and uh, and then and that's gonna that's that's gonna do irreparable irreparable damage. I think. You know, pe maybe people can just start wearing fucking you know masks no matter what wherever they wherever they go. I mean, you see it in China. You see it in China. Like people wear masks no matter what sometimes. And uh, and that's just because I think that they've been conditioned that that's you know that's a way to get around it. And again, you know, I'm no fucking virologist. I don't know nothing about. I don't well. I don't know anything really. I don't know really anything about about viruses or anything like that, but what I can say is that uh, we certainly had a few in the past. Uh, in this, in the last like 10, 15 years, we've had like what one, two, three. Now we've had uh, H1N1. We've had uh, so that's I think that was swine flu. Then we had avian flu, the bird flu, and then and then fucking bat flu on this one, uh, all coming out of the same place. Kind of strange, uh, but 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 that's not important. What's important is acceptance of cultures and. and <laughs> <laughs> and my point is, is that if it happened before, man, it can happen again. And it seems like this is happening more and more frequently. So, you know, this sort of situation come about anyways. Anyways, so it makes fucking sense that, te that the tech se sector is, is leading this because people are going to move into something like that because that's more autonomous. Wow. How did I get on that fucking tirade? My apologies. You don't want to listen to that. Let's talk about some more girthy green dildos, my friends. Anyways, um, anyways, uh, E-mini futures not looking as strong, not looking as strong as, uh, as NAS. But, you know, this one actually looking a lot more, obviously, tall to me in fact this one looking a lot more toppy to me it's it's the obvious thing to look for a gap fill back down to like 89 or sorry 28 to 30 i do believe yesterday i said that 8 28 30 was my was my upside target that obviously got blown through the roof in the aftermarket uh, hours but i'm curious uh we must have closed pretty damn good here on uh on thursday yeah more or less i do think that it's going to pop back out to uh to to open up the day about two, uh, 282 and a half 283 and then um and then i look for a little bit of a pushback right there Weekly should be closing relatively strong. Well, we, weekly is kind of a weekly uh, week close as well. No pun intended. Um, we do see a, a potential massive doji in play here alongside a re what, what would be considered if it closes like this a rejection of the 10 simple as a 21 and 55 cross, which is not the most bullish thing of all time and would align likely with the retest back down uh, to like the two at the very least the 260s level, but but probably the 255 level uh, more medium term. So I would keep an open mind on this one as well. Um, obviously, we'll see this during the Twitch stream. But uh, if if the weekly closes somewhere here or lower, below like 279 especially i would say that there's still still a possibility for downside in the more immediate future um however it, the 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 obvious read on this one is if it closes above 282 and a half 283 which futures are trading above right now to be fair now i don't really trust futures after market uh, or post market type shit um but uh but but if that were to happen i would obviously be, uh, I'd obviously be bullish for another push up actually above 300 bucks um, so a little bit of a waiting game here as well. Let's go check out GBDC, uh, in correlation with Bitcoin. And what do we see here? Going to be looking at the weekly close today as well. This, this seems to be a decent reaction off the 200 X benchmark average. 
on that test of the downside yesterday looking like a clear and obvious move back up to the top side of the range and this one looking a little bit more obvious overall got that nice sort of rolling over effect right here as long as we are below this prior high at uh, 814 8 or 810 or whatever it is yeah it looks like it's 809 um you know it's still still kind of just putting in lower highs overall and we are going to see momentum oscillators mm. Momentum also does actually have a mixed read here. The jewel is actually setting up for a, for a halt of your long signal, and we do have higher lows in place as well and higher highs. So you know what? Respect it. It's an uptrend. Um, let's see. What about a four hour? Yeah, pro probably going to pop back up here. Let's let's see how, let's see how it ends though. GBDC is hard to read on the upside, easy to read on the downside, and right now it looks more upside than downside. I think the better thing to do is to go back to um to, is go is to go back to uh, what's called uh, CME futures, which are as of, as of right now still putting in a lower high. Two hundred exponential average still reject and more importantly we do see that the uh, 55 is still very much it's, it's still very much far away from the 200 so it's not gonna be getting that golden cross anytime soon like spot could be and we do see the same sort of hidden bearish divergence between whoops hey get off there we see the same we see the same sort of hidden bearish divergence between this breakdown right here on 9th, 9th of april and where we're at right now so it is in play if we do take out this last local low right around 70 35 i would look for at the very least to move back down towards 69 50 and i do think that we'd move personally speaking i think that we'd extend that all the way down to about 67 50 ish region back down to uh, range over here so it's a little bit of a uh, it's 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 a little bit of a wait and see game here, but I do believe that uh, the ranges are are very steady, are are, are relatively steady at least. Um, so what else do we want to look at while we're here? Let's go look at some of the other market leaders to come up with a good old bias boner on top of that. Perhaps we see Mr. Buterall getting back up to the 200 exponential mean average. In fact, did Mr. Buterall close on new highs? Close 172 and a half. Last high was 173 spot 16. So no, not new highs, but could uh, we'll we'll have a chance here today. We'll have a chance if things are gonna if things are gonna move to the upside and fall traditional markets. It very likely does happen. You know, like sooner rather than later I, I don't want to give like super close dates because you never know but uh same sort of potential hot or log signals here on uh, on the daily jewel don't know don't know how much i trust that one i really i do not take those signals ever myself mrs litecoin looking a lot more under pressure does not does looks a lot a lot less strong than the other ones this one obviously looking well better said weak um we do see all momentum is actually still angled in the bearish territory i'm curious how the weekly is going to be shaping up uh, at this price point as well Still looks rather nasty as long as we're below 50 bucks, especially it is heavily bearish long term. But it doesn't mean it can't change around. And I'd look for strength in Bitcoin uh, or Buterol if it seems like Buterol is actually leading right now um, to kind of further confirm that if we actually do break to the upside. But for right now, still still a trend to the downside, man. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend, as the saying goes. And even on a fucking four hour, the trend is to the downside right now. Um, so, you know, I do have to I do have to remain with what I've been saying. It's just I don't have any real open um, deltas right now to kind of support my my bias, my bias boner with an actual financial contribution. Um, anyways, uh, let's go look at uh bitcoin versus the yen really quick as well i'm curious what, what that one's doing looks very similar to spot i don't think that there's anything too obvious here still working on lower highs didn't even get back above this spike high right here on the 11th of april on that last move to the upside so strange you'd, you'd expect to see those kind of working in line um so i think now's a good time to go look at the short-term ranges plus probabilities and see how this is starting to shape up right now so short-term ranges to the upside is obviously 7150 on even like a four-hour closure does it and i look for a move back up here this is where medium and long-term change uh in initiated measure move technically up to the 78 to 7900 level right here and uh, to the downside a little bit more diabolical but uh anywhere below 6950 and i do believe that we will revisit uh 6750 down here overall might not happen in the same move but you know it's, you know slow ebbing the probabilities in that favor so let's go see what it's showing right in over here um let's put in our probabilities and give me those probabilities baby we do see target up range no longer that was pretty high now wasn't it um let's see uh 70 70 let's let's look at the short term first 7150 it's it's, it's probably more like 7135 actually um to the downside uh, we could do 6950 um this is only short term again only 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 short term uh we do see that once again these extra screws into the upside jesus christ man just faking me out both ways making me look silly making me look silly crown is a moron um looking at the above target 
target probability, 40, 46 and a quarter percent uh, probability that we do close above the short term range and initiate that next move to 73.50. Um, and to the downside, 26 and a quarter percent uh, chance that we close to the downside. So both still relatively high. Obviously, the, the upside is a lot higher than the downside. Um, but let's see what the medium term range su suggests that 73.50 the upside. And then to the downside, we could we could still use like 6,700, I think, was still, still, still applicable. To the downside, oh my God, man, this is just whipping me around. Uh, eight and a quarter percent to the downside actually so that's relatively low of course when you compare it to the upside target probability 30 and a quarter percent so you know what's more likely right now the upside from a statistical uh, narrative does not mean that the downside can't happen but if you are playing game of statistics well right now it would suggest with regards to historic volatility percentile that the upside is actually more likely to initiate those moves uh coming in line with those areas so one more thing on the topic of the upside, uh, you know, we've spoken about this quite a bit, but we do remember that the two day dildo death cross has still not tested the 55. We have seen that all of the times in the history of Bitcoin. Anytime that we do get the two day dildo death cross, like we got right in over here before the inevitable dooms drop, there was a test of the 55. And then of course, the time before that in, uh, 1415, same thing right in over here, death cross, boom, test of 55 and the 200, where's 55 and the 200 right now. They're actually right at that upper target around actually a little bit low, lower than that, but the 200 is hanging around. 7,800. So within line of the blue box to the upside. Um, so it, it wouldn't be a too out of characteristic for, for Bitcoin to get back up there. Just want to show that it's still from a higher time frame perspective is, is in limbo, I guess is the better word. And then also going on to the monthly for, for another set of uh, perspectives. Um, you know, do I think that Bitcoin is even going to get like close? Do I think that Bitcoin can test 7,300 this month? Yeah, I do think that it can. Do I think that it's going to, it's likely to close above this month? And no, I think that if, you know, best case scenario for bulls here is that we probably test around 7,300, close, close the monthly somewhere around there and then pop up next month if that is going to happen. But again, it's going to take a lot of work for Bitcoin to do that. It doesn't mean that it can't happen, but in order for it to set up, I need to see it close here first, but still monthly stokes are well and off to the downside. Monthly RSI is living well below the exponential and uh, does have a very long-term signature of kind of putting in lows in this region. I'll give one more long-term counterpoint to this. I said I would save it for, for Sunday, but I do want to give credit to one of the members in the community who did point this one out. There is a very interesting read on the MACD. Um, and sorry, who is, who, what was this guy's name? I think his name was Lee. Was it Lee? Fuck, I, I want to make sure that I get this right. I, I can't pull it up exactly right now, but the, but but someone in the community actually did point this out. Um, so credit to him. I will have to uh, I will have to uh, look into his name after this so I can properly do that. Um, but there is an interesting read on the MACD here uh, for the weekly that has gotten the last few the last low pretty damn well. Actually, the last couple lows it looks like, but uh, we do have this baby over here having absolute massive bullish divergence coming off the lows, spiking down in March. So let's hold on. Let me first confirm this. So yes, low right there, low right there, lower low, and then it followed by the ultimate low right here. And that was three strikes of bullish divergence. And then boom, massive move up from uh, 30, uh, 3,100 to 14,000. And then actually we have a similar read going on right now. Now, don't we? We got this baby going on right here. Um, so that actually would suggest that perhaps the low is in, um, at least, at least, you know, at, at least aligning with a test higher, uh, maybe, maybe up into the eight thousands or, or test the top side resistance of this long term. I'm curious what, what the read was in 20, uh, 2014, 2015. Yeah, we did. We did have two or Actually, we know we did have three strikes of bullish evidence as well. Let's see. This is March, 2014. Um, let me double check March 24. Yeah. So it's this low this low and this low yeah so fair enough you know three strikes of bullish divergence on, on month or sorry weekly macd has gotten the last couple of um of uh of turn of macro turnarounds rather well so that is a good competing narrative to what i've been saying that the that we've never seen a macro reversal um without bullish divergence on the daily rsi which is true but we've also seen other ways to kind of get around it so may you know may, maybe i need to be using the macd a little bit more because it is off it is offering up a little bit more of a um of a unique perspective on this market and if it is right again well i think it's time to add it to my to my list long term i'm curious what the troll under bands are looking like as well Trolling your bands are floating around here. So I'm still showing about 68.50 as that uh, support level. Did have a nice fake out alongside of it yesterday. So that usually is a good thing actually as well. Uh, but more but more importantly, on top of that, we do see that they're tightening on the hole, which does suggest that we are going to be looking at a move outside of the range relatively soon. Range being to the top side, or actually on this, you know, basically above our prior high to the bottom side, 61.50. Um, so I think that's probably a good place to start to wrap this up. At the end of the day, I'm just I'm still just going from blue box to blue box. 
I will uncover back down below 6950 ish region. Target move probably back down to like 6750, 6700 ish region. Um, just playing short term ranges here. Hard to get too bearish as it is right now until we actually break this baby to the downside. Then I could look for a move all the way down here towards about 6400 once again. Um, I do think that that one would just be another another anemic bounce more more or less. And then uh, technically speaking, we do still have that mesh move all the way down to about 5850. We'll call it uh, give or take about 50 bucks to the upside. A little bit easier actually as uh, 7150 our last little prior spike high if we can close a four hour deal above there i would look for at the very least extension another couple hundred bucks higher towards 7350 ish region and then that's where things could actually get interesting to the upside but for right now a uh, little bit of hodling tight i do you know personally speak i per personally speaking i do think that this one ends up breaking to the downside but you know i'm just following the trend and uh and i will be happy to switch around my opinion if that uh if that gets proven wrong so with all that said time for me to wish you well time time for me to wish you the best of the best and the happiest of the happiest i'll be on twitch in probably a couple hours here I need to eat some steak oh man it's gonna be so good and uh and then i'll be uh be on for the next i don't know seven eight hours or however long it ends up being take care and until next time